This is Cameron Chai from azom.com bringing you another episode of azom.com TV and today we're speaking to John Sheen from Thermo Fisher Scientific and he's going to talk us through their range of handheld XRF analyzers. Thanks Cameron. So what we're going to talk about a little bit today is the handheld Thermo Scientific Niton XRF analyzers. To start off we're going to introduce you to the Niton XL2. This is our value offering in handheld XRF analysis, and it's ideal for a number of different applications, including scrap metal recycling, general metal alloy analysis, or grade uh, or grading in uh, mining and exploration, uh, as well as some very routine toy testing applications, testing for lead and cadmium in uh, consumer products such as uh, toys and uh, other child accessible products. Uh, the Niton XL2 platform was introduced last year and upgraded over the summer to include our GOLD technology. Now GOLD stands for Geometrically Optimized Large Drift Detector. Effectively what this does for our users is it provides them with the ability to see light elements such as magnesium, aluminum, and silicon in metal alloys. It also gives them the ability to measure samples in shorter amounts of time with greater precision than was previously available with other technology. The Niton XL2 complements our flagship XRF analyzer, the Niton XL3T. This is available with what we call Gold Plus technology, which really takes Gold technology to the next level, providing lower detection limits and even faster measurement times than the, uh, than the Niton XL2 with Gold technology. This is the definitive instrument for metal alloy measurement, including the ability to see very low levels of magnesium in metal alloys. It provides the best performance capabilities for mining and exploration, where users want to be able to get down to the levels of limits of detection that are below the average crustal abundance for those elements within the uh, within ore bodies around the world. The, uh, the Niton XL3 also has a couple of unique features, including a camera, so it's got the ability on board to take an image of the sample as it's being measured. Now when we go through a little bit later and run some samples, we'll be able to see where that adds value into, um, into the consumer goods measurement and into mining applications. Both products are available with a range of accessories. Uh, here on the table we have a couple of our different test stands. We have the Fieldmate as well as the Thermoscientific Mobile Test Stand. And the instruments clip right into the, uh, right into the test stands and permit users to take measurements of samples that have been either lightly prepared or more heavily prepared and they, you can just pop the sample, in this case a bag sample, into the, uh, into the test stand. You close it up and you can set the instrument to run one or two minute uh, measurements without having to hold on to the trigger during the duration of the, of the measurement. The mobile test stand functions in a similar fashion, but in this case instead of the instrument pointing down, it clips right in underneath to the, uh, to the analyzer. We've got inserts into the both test stands that provide the ability to measure um, prepared or cupped samples. So if users want to analyze samples they've prepared or certified reference materials to benchmark the performance of the analyzer, they've got the ability in both the mobile test stand as well as in the field mate to be able to measure cupped samples with ease. Okay, and how do these go with regards to calibration, John? Well, the instruments come factory calibrated. Now, when users power them on, we do recommend that they go through the system check procedure. And that's as simple as once you log on to the analyzer, just selecting the system check icon. That takes about two minutes once you select yes, and the instrument automatically runs through a self-standardization to ensure that it's functioning properly. Once it completes the self-standardization, we do recommend that the users run this instrument on a couple of known reference samples. That enables them to benchmark the instrument and ensure that it's performing correctly for the types of samples that they're going to be analyzing that day. 
for those customers who are performing measurements on critical use materials, things that may be used in the nuclear power industry, things that are used in pharmaceutical processing or in petrochemical, we do recommend that, the, uh, that they use samples that are NIST traceable and that if they're going to be analyzing a 316 stainless steel, that they use a certified 316 sample to verify the instrument is functioning properly, both before they take their measurements on unknown samples, as well as after taking measurements on these unknown samples. The real benefit to that, Cameron, is that once they complete that process, when they combine that with the fact that on both of these instruments, the data is encrypted and tamper-proof, which means that nobody can change any of the results on board the analyzer, nor can they change the results when they download it to a PC for documentation of their testing, then you combine that with the benchmarking of the instrument on those known reference samples, they've validated their data proving that the instrument has been in control over the course of the, course of the measurement sequence. And how easy, easy is it for someone to get the data from the instrument to their PC, for instance? Oh, that is, that's actually uh, one of the easiest things on the analyzer. So we do have a, a mini USB port on the back of the analyzer. For those customers that are running older PCs, we do actually have a serial plug that, uh, that they can also use. But what most customers really like is the built-in Bluetooth that comes on both the Niton XL3 and on the Niton XL2. So if you have a laptop or a PC with a built-in Bluetooth connection, it's just as simple as connecting up via, um, via Bluetooth and downloading just about as quickly as you can on a USB uh, cable. And you also cater for people who are from non-English speaking backgrounds? That is correct. So we actually have on board the analyzer the ability to support multiple languages. So if we come into the advanced menu and actually if we come into the system menu and click on language, we can see that users are, uh, are presented with an option for English, Fran French, Spanish, Portuguese, German, Chinese, Korean, Italian, Japanese, and even Czech. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter where customers are going to be using the analyzer or what the level of sophistication of these users might be because the instrument will provide those results in the native language of the user in a very easy to understand and easy to uh, interpret format. All right, John, and if anybody else wants any information on your instruments, where can they go to find that? They can go either to uh, azom.com or to thermoscientific.com forward slash niton. All right, John, thanks very much for the rundown on your products. You're welcome. Thanks, Cameron.